Finally, I'm very pleased to say we have with us uh, one of the men who helped inspire the Committee on the Present Danger of China, who has been very active with the committee and particularly has participated brilliantly in a number of the previous threat briefings that we've done here. In fact, I was very anxious to have him come back and reprise um, a message that he imparted to uh, some of the people Roger was just talking about on Wall Street in one of the programs that we did up there about a month or so ago about freedom and what's really on the line at the moment now with communist China and its efforts to deprive really the freedom of the world. His name, of course, is Steve Bannon. He has just blown in from Europe where he was uh, working to prop up freedom over there. We're very grateful to him for that. And uh, he is, of course, a former strategic advisor to President Trump and uh, chairman of a great news organization, Breitbart, and a member of the Committee on the Present Danger of China. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. Um, that's the reason I wanted to get back here today was to give you a report from the front. You know, the the uh, I think the last time I saw you folks was the last week of of April. Uh, and historic, Frank. I think you underplayed it with Roger Robinson and Cal Bass and the team. A historic um, uh, committee on the present danger briefing at the St. Regis Hotel in Midtown Manhattan about uh, finance, Wall Street, capital and how it's created this Frankenstein monster, which is the radical cadre, the CCP that controls China. I've had the opportunity since we last talked to go to Norway, Berlin, Italy, France, London, and Kazakhstan. And here's what's fascinating. People have actually started to see the videos that we've been doing. People are actually starting to understand what's going on. In every capital I was in, and I was over there principally for the European parliamentary elections, but in every capital where I would meet with business leaders, political activists, people in the populist movement, people in the sovereignty movement, some people who are in government today, and particularly financial people, we are at an inflection point because the world is starting to awaken that something has gone terribly, terribly wrong. And the reason it went terribly wrong is because of us. It is our capital, our technology, our elites that have imposed this on the Chinese people. This is not about the United States versus China. This is not about the industrial democracies versus China. The Chinese people are among the most noble, hardworking, family-oriented, terrific people on the face of the planet. And their, their, their history of when they're allowed to have freedom of speech and freedom of religion and freedom of assembly and property rights in the rule of law is unparalleled, second to none, in Hong Kong and in Taiwan, in Southeast Asia and Singapore, in London, and in the United States of America. It was driven home to me actually in Berlin. I was talking about, uh, I was making an analysis, doing an analysis and a presentation uh, about Made in China 2025. As you all know, the three prongs of the geopolitical uh, tsunami that is hitting us from Beijing, from, the, from uh, President Xi and Wan Shishan, is One Belt, One Road, Made in China 2025, and Huawei's 5G rollout, game, set, match. The most extraordinary, ambitious, audacious geopolitical roll-up in mankind's history. Even if you give the benefit of the doubt, which I do not, but let's for a second 
do it to the to the elites, to the Henry Kissinger and Graham Allison and that crowd, the Thucydides trap, which, by the way, is inculcated in all the elites when you go around and talk to them, whether it's in Paris or in Berlin or in London. In the 16 examples, I say, you know, it's interesting. You talk about you know, rising powers, declining powers, Peloponnesian War, Athens, Sparta. There's not one example where the so-called rising power was financed by the elites of the declining power. What happened to us? Look at the people of China. Across a broad section, Uyghurs, Falun Gong, Dalai Lama, the Tibetan Buddhist, the underground evangelical Christian church, the underground Catholic church, and the basic citizens of China, day in and day out, in a totalitarian surveillance state. Completely, with no property rights, no freedom of speech, no religious rights, a totalitarian state that the elites of the West financed and basically gave the technology and the equipment to. NPR had a, had a great report a couple of weeks ago. I think it was 500 companies. There was 200, 200, 500 companies that had all, they had gone to the files, had all somehow gone to the, I think it was the Treasury Department, Department of Commerce, and complained about not just forced technology transfer, but cyber intrusions, technology theft, forced technology transfers, all there. The reporter, no right winger, n not from Breitbart, from National Public Radio, went around. Every executive said, it's terrible. We're getting crushed. Not one executive would go on camera, would be interviewed, would give their name, etc., for fear. In Germany, it hit me in the solar plexus. Somebody sat there and said, you know, Merkel and this crowd, and the Davos crowd, and the guys in Brussels are exactly like Hillary Clinton and the elites in the United States. They lost confidence in themselves. They lost faith in themselves. They actually believed that we are the declining power and that they're the rising power. And who's going to pay for that? Who's first paying for it is the Chinese people. It's upon their shoulders that this burden has been foisted. The great part about this committee and what we've been doing, the work, is it's off the shoulders of who's the closest equivalent to old hundred names. And that's the deplorables. If it wasn't in the summer and in the fall of 2016, we wouldn't be here. This would not have happened. Because the deplorables found an instrument. Donald Trump. And that instrument, as you can see in England today, is an armor in all of its imperfections, is an armor-piercing shell. But it's the deplorables that said, I don't understand all this high finance, and I don't understand all this, you know, Mumbo jumbo, but here's what I do understand. The factories left, the jobs left with them, and the opioids came. If you go to Germany, they understand that Made in China 2025 is absolutely targeted to, was it the Mittelstand? The, the, the private companies are the backbone of German society that, that employed the deplorables of Germany? Seemed right at them. The robotics and the precision engineering, it's coming right at them. They no longer can hide, and their elites have allowed this to happen. The great, the great point of this inflection point, it's totally anti-elite how we got here. 
this is true populism. This is true the grit and determination. The only way that we're going to take down this radical cadre, the CCP, is old hundred names. When finally they've had enough of it, and finally they understand that we in the West are going to hold our elites accountable. We're not going to do this anymore. You've seen the work of Roger Robinson. You've seen, you've seen the, the work of different members in the committee. And now people are all shocked. You know, they can't believe there's been gambling going on in this establishment, right? Here's your winnings. But from Kazakhstan to Berlin to Paris to Italy to London to Bergen, Norway, when I show up, they want to talk about populism. They want to talk about this sovereignty movement. They want to talk about nationalism. But you know what they really want to talk about first? They want to talk about China. It permeates everything. It is the central issue of our time. And the central issue, the core issue, is how we took the great values of the West and looked the other way for money. My favorite publication, the New York Times, today, on its page one, right hand, has the brutal expose of a member of the cabinet, Elaine Chow, a Harvard graduate, I might add, Harvard Business School, based upon the work, part of the work of Peter Schweitzer, I'm very proud to say, and the Government Accountability Institute. This work came from many years ago. Remember, we did Clinton Cash. It took years to do that, to expose the Clintons. Bernie Sanders and other Democrats wanted to touch it. You know, Bernie had a pillow fight during that, uh, the, the primary. Wouldn't touch it. Mention it every now and again, wouldn't touch it. The Trump campaign, we went right at it of her corruption. When Peter and the team finished, this is back in 2014, he said they thought, what, what should we do next? How about Chinese influence peddling in this city? And it was Peter's team that came up with the two examples. We're going to do one, Repu we're going to do Republicans and Democrats. This is, a, this is where they say there's no bipartisanship. When it comes to taking Chinese money, they're bipartisan. But Elaine Chow and McConnell, if you read the book, and there's a lot of questions to be answered, and I'm sure they're going to be answered. But what's most shocking is Joe Biden. Now, Joe Biden is running for president of the United States, and last time I looked, he's 32 points ahead in the Democratic primary, right? 23 points here, 32 points here. I think if you look at some of these individual states now that are putting out the polls, he's matching up or actually beating President Trump in some of the core states that have to, have to, we have to win. You know, I'm waiting, for, I'm waiting for the New York Times. I noticed they started with the Republican on the bipartisan part, right? I'm just waiting for the paper of record, because these are actually, I know some of these are, very, these are great reporters, to do, to do the Democrat. But Joe Biden is going to have to answer some basic questions before he is even eligible to think about being President of the United States. He's got to answer not just to the people in the United States, he's got to answer to the Chinese people why he took 1.5, or his family took $1.5 billion dollars in a private equity fund to invest, and then why they invested that money in these surveillance companies. We have to know how he's been compromised. We have to know how much money the, they took. We have to know, we got to see the documents that they pitched. We have to go back to the beginning. His son is totally and completely incompetent to run a private equity firm. You guys know how hard it is to raise that kind of money, the track record you have to have, the years of experience. And where, what was Biden over there in 13? What he was over there for? The Munich of the 21st century is those islands in the South China Sea. They're going to cause more problems for Asian people in Korea, in Taiwan, in Singapore, in Japan. Those are stationary aircraft carriers. They 
allow the radical cadre, the CCP, to say this is a territorial sea. This is ours. Biden went over there, and Biden looked the other way. And Biden looked the other way in that entire time frame when they took hard cash from the Chinese Communist Party, the Bank of China. Remember, the Bank of China, unlike other G20 countries, does not, is not independent. It reports, not to the state, it reports to the Chinese Communist Party. I know we've got a time limit. i got a bolt, but here's what I want to tell you. The work that we're doing here is incredibly, incredibly important, and people that matter are looking at this now. Major publications, every day there's another expose. Every day they're asking questions like Roger Robinson just asked. Why are there different reporting requirements? Why, why can't you see the accounting papers? Look at these bankruptcies. Look at this bank that failed the other day, the regional bank in China. The other one's on the watch list. What is it, 25? I think it's 20 have not reported latent reporting. Wait till those dominoes start falling. Let's talk about the World Bank. Let's go into the World Bank and find out what they're doing to finance China. This is an outrage. And here's why it's an outrage. It's an outrage that we in this city, in Wall Street, in the city of London, in Frankfurt, can fully understand what's happening to the Chinese people. They all know what's happening to the Uyghurs. They all know what's happening to the Dalai Lama and the Tibetan Buddhists. They all know what's happening to Falun Gong. They all know what's happening to the underground Christian and Catholic Church. They understand the surveillance, totalitarian dictatorship of what it's doing to the Chinese people. Everybody knows. You can't hide anymore. And yet, they still want to finance it. They still want to provide the technology for it because they want to make a buck. We have to stop that. We have to hold ourselves accountable. This was not she, this was not Wan Shi Shan, this was us. We did this. That Frankenstein monster is our responsibility. We have a fiduciary. And I like the way that Roger Robinson used underwriting. We have a fiduciary responsibility to unwind this. This is not about trade, this is not about soybeans, this is not about steel. This is the highest moral imperative we have. Now, I don't want to hear people say, oh, in the 1930s this, 1930s that. That was horrible. That's then. This is now. We see this. We're going to have to live with this. A hundred years from now, they're going to accuse us. And that's why I'm so proud to work with you guys. Our work's just started, but I'm telling you it's getting traction. And here's what. The rats are leaving the ship, and they know they can't hide anymore. Thank you very much.